Yeah, yeah, they're very good at that. They're very good at the uh, um, asking for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> um, and uh, well, look, I think they have um, a few things that traditional media don't have. Um, the obvious thing is they have engineers and they have data. Um, and that's a very powerful combination because with the data, they're able to see uh, with a high degree of precision how people are consuming news at scale. So if, for example, you run, uh, you run YouTube, you're able to see you know, how long videos should be, be, go on for, whether um, videos work better if they're thematic or whether they're, they're people-led. Um, there's a whole body of data that can give you a strong indication of how to be successful with your product development. The media industry simply hasn't got that volume of data. And so the tech companies have that competitive advantage, which is really the data and then sitting behind the data, the engineer, the armies of engineers who have the capacity to build products um, rapidly and at scale. But there's one other thing, um, uh, you know, that uh, we should be mindful of is that the, the best of these tech companies are fearless. And I think that's something that the media industry can learn from. The media industry tends to be quite timid, quite conservative in terms of how it develops products, how it tests products. The media industry tends to be terrified of making any changes to its digital product portfolio. Uh, by contrast, um, you can see at companies like Snapchat and Google and Facebook um, that they'll have a concept, uh, rapidly prototype it, they'll test it in customers, and then they'll put it live and they'll look at the data and they'll see what's working, what's not working. And I think that that culture of fearlessness is something that should uh, inspire media companies and they should attempt to be, uh, take, a, take a few more risks with their products. Um, so I think that's something for us to be mindful of.